Thanks, Jason, and uh, thanks to you attendees for uh, tuning in on this uh, webinar on the uh, quality assurance measurement requirements for propens. Uh, as most of you know, in hydraulic fracturing, this drilling practice pumps a combination of high-pressure water and propens, along with small amounts of chemicals, downward and then horizontally through natural gas-bearing shale. Propens are small particulates which keep the fissures propped open for smooth gas flow to the surface. More on propens in the next slide. Here a typical well is diagrammed on the left and a closer view of the fissures being opened from the main shaft through the shale is shown on the right. And here's a larger view of a diagram showing the propens in the shale fissures keeping them propped open for good gas conductivity or flow back to the well surface. Propen characteristics. The ideal propens would be lighter than water, stronger than diamond, cheaper than dirt, and readily available, which of course they are not. Realistically, premium propens do exist and would have a narrow size distribution, high strength, and high sphericity or roundness, two important shape factors. And inferior propens with broad size distributions, low strength, and flat and angular shapes must be avoided. The various types of propens include sand, ceramics, and resin coated sand and ceramics. Sand is least expensive and most used, but has shape characteristics that limit the gas conductivity compared to other types. It has moderate strength and fines are generated if particles get crushed. Ceramics are more expensive, have superior shape characteristics compared to sand, and come in various strengths depending on grade. The resin coatings on some sands and ceramics have no real effect on strength, but they do prevent fines from being released into the fissures if the particle is crushed. Curable coated propens bond together to form physically strong links when subject to high pressures and temperatures, preventing propent flowback. Propens make up about 10% by weight of the fracking fluid pumped into the well. Their purpose is to keep the shale fissures which are opened with the high pressure fluid from collapsing on themselves so the gas conductivity back to the surface is least impeded. Three types of propens are shown here, a high strength, narrow size, high gas conductivity ceramic at the top of the pyramid and then a medium strength, broader size, medium conductivity resin coated ceramic and a lower strength, lower conductivity sand at the bottom. Here are some examples of commercially available propens. Natural and processed sands still represent by far the largest and lowest cost volume of propens used today. Here are photos of sand and lightweight, intermediate, and high-density ceramic. In general, the ceramics have the highest strength and most spherical and smoothest surfaces for excellent conductivity. The choice of propent, however, depends on the structural strength of the shale formation, the rate of production desired, and cost. This slide refers to the official test requirements for propens as set forth in the American Petroleum Institute's current API RP19C standard. It provides size distribution ranges and two geometric shape factors that must be measured and reported among properties, other properties such as crushing strength. Their size fractions range from 3.35 millimeters down to 106 microns in a number of different smaller size fractions depending on grade of the propent detailed on the next slide. The Crumbian Sloss chart developed back in the 1960s 
showing example silhouettes of combined roundness and sphericity of a small sample of 20 particles is subjectively measured by a technician on a manual microscope. More on these shape factors will be discussed later. Parenthetically, very recently, Stat Oil and GE Oil held an open invitation challenge for an improved prop and shape. They asked for solutions that could reduce environmental impacts, lessen emissions, and make energy production more efficient. They sought a lighter and more compact replacement for current propens. An X-shaped extruded propent won the challenge, but whether this shape will meet required crush strength specs or be economically viable still need to be proven. And will any company choose to manufacture and market it? But such challenges by the industry reflects their commitment to lessening environmental impact and reducing cost of hydraulic fractured fuel deposit. This slide is a table listing the API's required size fractions to be measured for propens. The top rows shows the micron size of each, mic of each fraction and the next row the ASTM sieve designation for each fraction. The next table of primary and secondary sieves shows in bold font the top size and bottom size sieve to be used in measuring each fraction. This table establishes sieve sizes for use in testing designated propent sizes for different grades. It should be used as a guideline and doesn't attempt to preclude the use of other grades that are or can become available. In addition to the size fraction measurement requirements listed in the previous slide, there is a requirement to visually estimate two shape parameters of the propent particles, sphericity and roundness. Here's the Crumbian Sloss chart for estimating those shape parameters for propens. Both sphericity and roundness on a scale of 0 to 1, a value of 1 for each parameter would represent the best shape for a propent, a perfectly smooth sphere. This shape would maximize the gas conductivity. But the current official API procedure for making this measurement is decades behind the existing technology of automated 3D image analysis, which could make these and many more shape measurements on thousands times the existing sample size requirements in minutes with no operator visual subjectivity. Note at the bottom of the slide, the standard actually states visual estimation. The procedure for estimating sphericity and roundness of propens by using the Crumbian Sloss chart uses a 10 to 40 X magnification microscope and a balance with an accuracy to 0.1 milligram. The technician records the weight of each size fraction, then chooses only 20 particles at random from that fraction observes them microscopically, and estimates their shapes relative to the images labeled with values on the chart, and reports those shapes to the nearest tenth. Automated 3D dynamic image analysis is now an accepted alternate procedure for both the size distributions and the shape measurements for propens. This offers major advantages saving significant time and cost improving measurement accuracy by making a single measurement of one large sample reporting the complete size distribution plus the actual measured sphericity and roundness for each particle in each size fraction on thousands of particles in minutes rather than hours with no error prone subjective estimates of shape on unrepresentative samples. And more advantages of automated 3D image analysis, actual measured sphericity and roundness of all individual particles in each size fraction rather than visual estimates of 20 particles per size fraction. 
This eliminates operator error and it reports some 36 different size and shape parameters, some of which can be complementary for the sphericity and the roundness values and help define tighter specifications. Here is a schematic which shows the simplicity of dynamic image analysis as used in this Partan 3D analyzer. The dry sample placed in the funnel above right moves on a vibratory feeder to the edge of the sensing zone where it falls by gravity through the sensing zone and is collected in the sample box at the bottom. A light strobe on one side of the sensing zone lights the particles as a digital camera on the other side photographs the particles as they tumble through the sensing zone. A video file of the analysis is stored and distributions and summary data for 36 morphological parameters for each particle are calculated and reported. And all this data is available as soon as the analysis ends, typically in less than five minutes. This is an open instrument photo of the analyzer. The particles are seen tumbling through the sensing zone on the left while the strobe and camera record the video file of the analysis. This video file can later be recalled and rerun under different measurement conditions or overlaid on a graph of a series of historical data. The image analysis technology could hardly be more simple or robust. The next set of five slides illustrate the many advantages of 3D image analysis for province. This one is the XY graph, which here is displaying the volume size distributions of the 3D length, the red curve, the width, the green curve, and thickness, the third dimension in black, in differential frequency size distributions. Up to six of the 36 parameters can be displayed here at one time, or historical records of the same parameter can be called up for comparison purposes. This Partan graph shows the Crumbian slots sphericity and roundness shape factors plotted relative to their values for each size fraction measured. Curve one is the sphericity with values running from 0.87 to 0.99. Curve 2, roundness, runs from about 0.46 to 0.84. Over 15,000 particles were measured in under five minutes. This is the tabular partan data for the measured, the measured sample that we just saw. The column at the left is a list of size fractions in microns and the next three columns are the 3D length, width, and thickness size distributions by volume weight percent. The last three columns are roundness, one, sphericity, two, and count, three, by size fraction. The count column lists the number of particles measured in each size fraction. This is a very important slide. It's a size plot of the Partan's Civ parameter, which can be calculated from the 3D measured sizes and which reports the same size distribution values as the actual Civ data. Note the Partan Civ parameter curve directly overlays the actual manually entered Civ values with the option to show mesh sizes on the x-axis. This feature allows the user to continue reporting the data in their sieve format if they desire. This is the Partan scatter diagram window. The blue window shows the location of every particle in the sample relative to each of its Crumbian shape parameters. Sphericity on the top x-axis and roundness on the right y-axis. Any one of Partan's 36 3D size or shape parameters can be plotted on either one of these graphs simultaneously. Summary data for each of those parameters on this processed sand sample 
are listed in the column at the right. And note I've blocked out uh, for this process sand the sphericity and roundness values for each parameter and that they meet the acceptable API standards both mean values greater than 0.6. And these parameters were actually measured on over 15,000 particles rather than visually estimated on a random selection of only 20 particles by an analyst on an optical microscope. The darker the blue in the scatter diagram, the higher the particle concentration is. The bulk of the sample population can be seen in the scatter diagram to be within API specification limits. On this next sample displayed of unprocessed sand, note in the highlighted box at the bottom right that the roundness specification is too low for the API standard at a mean of 0.52 instead of greater than 0.6. And this is actual measured roundness on over 15,000 particles. This would be a very difficult distinction to make on 20 particles by manual visual inspection. The inspect values of the previous samples are given in parentheses. This is the view particles window in the Partan software. This contains the full scrollable image file of the particles measured. And it's saved as a video file which can be rerun later under different SOP conditions. And it can also be printed and exported in both image and in data formats. The image file is shown here sorted in descending order on a length parameter with the length value displayed under each image. Shown also is the particle query window where a search for particles with various parameter limits can be made. The current query shown here will list all images and their respective distribution of particles with a sphericity and a roundness greater than the Crumbian minimum value of point. It will also report the percentage of those particles in the sample. Microtrack offers two different Partan 3D dynamic image analyzers shown in this slide. At the left is the Partan 3D Pro, short for process, showing a unit mounted on a process pipe, sampling and measuring the process stream, and returning it to the process. The Pro version provides continuous unmanned operation and sample measurement with turnaround time averaging about 10 minutes, which greatly improves process control response time and the normal increase in both productivity and quality versus having to collect the samples manually, bring them to a lab, and then make all the measurements. On the right is an RD or QC lab bench model, which also has an optional auto sampler accessory for continuous unattended measurement of up to 24 samples. Microtrack has over 40 online process image analysis systems like that on the left installed in a variety of processes worldwide. So in summary, propens are used in hydraulic fracking to keep the shale fissures open for good natural gas conductivity back to the surface. Sand is most used and least expensive, but ceramics are also available with higher strength and smoother surfaces, but at a higher cost. QA measurement of various sieve size fractions plus sphericity and roundness shape factors are required to be measured according to the specifications in the American Petroleum Institute's API RP 19C standard. Automated 3D image analysis, offered and patented only by Microtrack, now makes this task far easier, faster, and more accurate than the traditional manual methods. If you are interested to see how your material measures up with the Partan, 
Send Jason, Noga, an email to schedule your complimentary sample analysis. For more information about our entire suite of particle characterization solutions, visit microtrack.com today.